Every once in a while in one of these challenges, I feel like I actually do something smart. And this is that week. <laughs> Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's week three of the Kyosho Inburno Monthly Mayhem Challenge. And if you're not familiar with the Monthly Mayhem Challenge format, it's where Josh from Harley Designs and I take an existing vehicle and do something crazy, wild, insane, or filled with mayhem. And in this case, we're using the Kyosho Inferno GT2 Nitro cars and doing massive burnouts. Or well, at least hoping to do massive burnouts. This is the week where I put some theories into practice and I think I think I've got some stuff figured out that's gonna make this actually work. Cosmetically, there aren't that many changes to the Audi body. Uh, I've added a little bit of yellow tint to the front uh, headlights. I think it adds a nice touch to the car overall and adds at least five style points. And I think that that's really super important in the final week. So the more style points I can get, the better. It's gonna look awesome on film too. And I'm uh, really, really, really excited about actually filming the final run. This week I've put on the D-Boots Hoon's tires from the Infraction or uh, the other fast car that Arma makes right now. These offer a lot of smoke. Uh, they were designed to smoke. So in that regard, I think we've got that covered. Um, I've also tightened all the wheel nuts because in testing last week, I actually lost a wheel nut because uh, <laughs> it just like pew shoots off and then it's gone forever and you're like well that's the end of that day uh, these D-Boots tires are definitely going to add a lot of smoke and what Josh did with his body was he actually uh, converted it to two-wheel drive rear wheel drive only and he also put in a whole shroud back there to make sure all the smoke goes out the back of the car and that's great I think it's actually a really smart idea it's not something I've done yet uh, I want to see how much smoke I can generate without having to do any of that shrouding. Um, I honestly, I think that there's going to be enough airflow going through the car anyway that it's going to push the smoke in the back and move it towards the back of the car anyway. Um, we'll see. I, I may still do that. I may make some inner fenders just to kind of keep some of that smoke going in the right direction, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, plus, I'm also staying all-wheel drive, so that would mean I'd have to do an awful lot more shrouding and I don't really know that it's necessary. We're gonna find out this week anyway. The biggest change, well, there's two big changes for this week. One, I've rerouted the exhaust using some silicone tubing of the same diameter that was originally on the car, and now I'm just moving that exhaust towards the back. I've asked a few people if that's going to affect the performance of the vehicle, and everyone's universally agreed that it's not gonna be a big deal. Um, so. You know, we'll see. And lastly, the biggest change for this week and something that I had been sort of struggling with and thinking about for a long time is how am I going to keep this car stationary? It doesn't want to do that. It wants to move forward. No matter how little friction is generated, it's still going to want to move forward. And to get a standing burnout in all wheel drive, I don't think anybody could do it with an RC car without holding it back in some way. I didn't want to have some sort of external force holding the car back so I had to put on my thinking cap and make sure that I was actually gonna do something to prevent this car from moving forward. The best thing I could come up with is the claw. And this is a servo actuated uh, claw that goes down just below the tire line that I think I could put into a seam in the pavement where I'll be running the car and actually just let it sit in one spot. Spool up those tires and start making some smoke. That way it doesn't look like the car's being held back by anything, it's just being held back and it's sort of an invisible solution. I'm actually feeling pretty smart about this. I'm hoping that the car doesn't have enough torque to actually kind of rip that servo out of its position. What I did was I took the existing bumper mount from the front of the car, moved it to the back of the car, screwed my servo in with a couple of uh, existing servo mounts that I had on hand, and cut up a piece of 16 gauge steel that I had lying around. I could have used a saw blade, I guess, but I didn't have one of those on hand, and what better way to reduce, reuse, and recycle them by using some materials you've already got lying around. I feel like this is a pretty interesting solution, and I feel like uh, without having tested it, I think it's the sort of thing that can work. 
I also picked up this little 2S Reedy LiPo pack designed exclusively for running as a receiver battery for a nitro car. It's going to offer a little more punch, give me a little more servo juice. Uh, it just made sense to get something that's actually designed to run on a nitro car rather than using up my AA batteries. Finally for this week, friction is uh, one of the things that I'm kind of concerned about and I don't want to run this thing on any textured or really heavily textured ground. I think that it's just going to break loose and not really do what we want it to do. So I think a smoother surface is actually going to work a lot better than uh, you know a hard textured surface. I think it'll still generate enough heat and still generate enough friction that it'll actually create maybe even more smoke because the contact patch on the tire to that surface is going to be much greater. So I'm going to try running it on a piece of wood that I have lying around here. Um, it's not the perfect uh, solution, but it's definitely a solution. And I think it's worth giving it a shot. So why don't we get out of the studio, go outside and see what we can do. This is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Uh, the claw doesn't want to engage. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know the D-Boots tires are going to smoke, but uh, I'm just getting too much traction. Even on the wood, uh, I don't think this is, this is quite working right. So I guess we're going to have to convert it to line lock, two-wheel drive. Otherwise, it's just, it's always just going to push. Uh, if you guys think that the claw might work, there's something about it that we could change or try differently. Uh, I'm all ears. <laughs> um, yeah. So that was, we're going to say that's a failure. <laughs> if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. Uh, week I better figure out something quick. Thanks so much for watching. See you again soon.